speak. Madam Clerk, we have any speakers? I'm ordering it. I will. Uh, I'm or looking at Jensen. the status. Ms. Jensen, of uh, Ms. Jensen, uh, please uh, go ahead. You have the floor. Yes, um, I'm very, very concerned about no, how. No, you do not. No, you do not have the floor, Ms. Jensen. Yeah. I am the Sorry, chair. Mr. I Wayne. ordered the meeting Mr. be suspended. Wisher, Mr. Easter, until, you're out of order. You are out of until, order. Until, you are out of order. You, until you've removed such yourself time from the meeting. As I blacked out hundreds of pages of we scandal documents requested by the finance committee so we raised a point of privilege with your table saying could you please help get those documents unblacked out the speaker said the finance committee should take that issue up yesterday it did at which point liberals said no this is a matter for the speaker when we explained the contradiction the chair of the committee jammed his fist in front of the camera and suspended the meeting altogether so here we are back in front of the speaker. Madam Speaker, can you help us get these documents unblacked out? The documents are not coming out, it seems. The committee, the finance committee has been suspended. Who knows when it's gonna start back up? There's there's no word on it. This is this is crazy. Um cover up. That, that's all there is to it and no media is I haven't seen any media cover this the cover-up is being covered up by media uh, as the member uh, is aware the speaker does not answer to questions during question period and seeing no member rising to answer the question uh, please go to the next question the member for Carlton Mr. S Madam Speaker I, I feel like I've just called CRA and they've transferred me from one agent who says, no, I have to transfer you back to the other agent, who says, no, go back to the first agent, and then when you get back to the first agent, well, the line just goes dead altogether. <laughs> so we have blacked out documents, a deadline, we've been transferred from agent to agent. How the heck are we supposed to get at the truth? <laughs> Madam Speaker, our colleague's been here for a while. He knows that the committees make their own decisions. They do their own job. And I encourage, I encourage the opposition to work with us, with Canadians, to help them as we're facing COVID, as we're facing these economic challenges. So, Speaker, as they concentrate on politics and committees, we concentrate our work, work and efforts on Canadians. Questions? The Honourable Member for Calgary Nose Hill. Madam Speaker, this morning provinces are reporting a record number of new coronavirus cases, and a second closure of restaurants is likely imminent. Around the world, experts are using frequent COVID tests to provide results within 15 minutes to prevent business and school closures. But not in Canada. The Prime Minister has failed to get these rapid, easy to get tests. And it's possible that 33,000 restaurant workers in Toronto alone could lose their job in this second lockdown. We don't have job-saving rapid tests. Why? Minister of Health. Mr. Speaker, again, we see the member of the opposition present false information to the House of Commons. In fact, we do have rapid tests in Canada. They're deployed in rural and remote communities, in areas where there are vulnerable populations and a fragile health health care system. Mr. Speaker, we've also approved, Madam Speaker, <laughs> apologize. We've also approved a number of rapid tests recently. As the member opposite knows, there is no one silver bullet to managing COVID-19 outbreaks. We'll be there for provinces and territories and indeed restaurateurs as they manage this new wave of COVID together. Honourable Member for Calgary, Nose Hill. Madam Speaker, I would challenge somebody who's watching this in Toronto worried about their business closing to go out right now and try and get a rapid test with results in 15 minutes and see who's presenting the right information here. That answer was arrogant, deceptive and incompetent. Rapid tests keep restaurants open because it means that we can isolate those who are affected rather than shutting everything down. When are we getting rapid tests? The Honourable Minister of Health. 
Speaker, again, I invite the member opposite to take the briefing with Health Canada so she can understand the complexity of rapid tests and how they can actually make situations even more precarious for communities. In fact, testing is one component of managing COVID-19. We know that we will be there for provinces and territories as they manage COVID-19 outbreaks. We'll continue to be there with additional resources. But, Ms. Madam Speaker, this is, a, this is a complex area. And, in fact, in many jurisdictions that have used rapid tests in that way, they have seen worsening of their outbreaks. The Honourable Member for Calgary, Nose Hill. If a woman watching this today has been laid off because of COVID restrictions or her kid's school has been shut down, and she tried to get a rapid, frequent COVID test or her school's, uh, kid's school tried to do that, she couldn't. That's the reality in Canada. Rapid tests keep schools open. Rapid tests keep daycares open. Rapid tests keep women in the workforce. Yet we don't have those here in Canada. Why has the Prime Minister failed Canadian women and failed to get them rapid tests? Minister of Health. Madam Speaker, around the world there are very high profile examples of how rapid tests have actually added confusion and increased risk of infection. They are not a silver bullet, Madam Speaker. It is very important that whatever tools that we bring to the Canadian market are going to make it easier for communities to manage COVID-19, including sectors like the restaurant sector. We'll be there for Canadians no matter what it takes, Madam Speaker, but this member opposite clearly could use the briefing from Health Canada. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent, Madam Speaker. What a shame to see the government once again acting like this. The reality is that across Canada, there are problems with the fact that there's no rapid testing. For example, Quebec, a thousand classes have been closed. The director of the Principals Association said that it takes twice as long to test than before. If the government had done its work and quickly brought forth wrapping tested, we wouldn't be here today. Why is the government dragging its heels? The Honourable Minister of Health. Madam Speaker, all across Canada, in fact, we've seen an uh, increase of COVID cases. And in fact, we've been working with provinces and territories to make sure they have the tools that they need. I've worked closely with the province of Quebec, with the province of Ontario, in fact, all provinces to make sure that whatever we add as a solution together is going to actually help with the outbreak of COVID-19. The members opposite seem to think that you can test your way out of COVID-19. In fact, that's not true. We need to test, we need to contact trace, we need to isolate, and we need to support business and industry as well as Canadians who have lost their jobs either because of shutdowns or because of uh, infections will be there for us Canadians. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Madam Speaker, that's exactly the problem. Every step is important. The Premier of Quebec asked Quebecers to download the COVID app. I even did it myself. And if I can, everyone can. The problem is that, well, it's nice to have this technological tool but we need rapid testing for things to work for real. My question is simple. How come for six months the government has been dragging its heel and not properly evaluated rapid testing that all Canadians need today? The Honourable Minister of Health. Speaker, and around the world, countries are anxiously awaiting new technology that is going to add to our ability to contain COVID-19. In fact, uh, researchers and technologists around the world are looking for new products and new approaches to testing that will help. But Madam Speaker, we remain firm. We'll be there for provinces and territories as long as it takes for whatever it takes to manage through this next wave of COVID-19. We know that testing is part of the solution, but certainly not all of it, Madam Speaker. And I continue to be there no matter what uh, province or territory needs. The Honourable Member for St. Jean. Madam Speaker, Ottawa is investing $209 million to convert Ford's Oakville factory to one that builds electric vehicles. This is good news, but remember that expertise in electrification of transportation resides in Quebec, not in Ontario. Clean electricity is us. Batteries are us. Charging stations are us. In the throne speech, the government said that it wants to make Canada a global leader in clean energy. Does it recognize Quebec's expertise and will it refocus its investment on Quebec's business cluster? Honorable the Honourable Minister. Yesterday, we announced that Ford will invest $1.8 billion to set up battery electric vehicle production in Oakville, which will include federal and provincial assistance. This is about Canada and it's about Quebec. But it's part of a start. It's only a beginning. 
of what we hope is a significant focus on a sustainable and greener economic recovery all across Canada. We see leading actors in this space across the country. In Quebec, Lion Electric. In uh, Nova Scotia, the Honourable for Saint Jean. Madam Speaker, the Bloc is concerned because Ottawa is not an ally of clean industries in Quebec. Expertise in shipbuilding, we have it. Yet Davy, the biggest shipbuilder in Canada, was completely left out of $100 billion in federal contracts. Aerospace expertise, we also have. But there's been no federal aid for one of the hardest hit sectors by COVID or a global policy for the future of this industry. Can the government commit to investing in the electric industry in Quebec rather than relocating our expertise to Ontario? The Honourable Government House Leader, Madam Speaker, while the Bloc Québécois is concerned, we are taking action, investing and electrification of vehicles is good news for everyone, not just for Ontario, but for all Canadians. And it's also going to benefit Quebec companies. We've already uh, seen this in Quebec. So once again, we shouldn't be opposing Quebec with the other provinces. We have to work together to help our country. Well, member for New Westminster, Burnaby. Madam the President, can you Madam Speaker, struggling to get through this pandemic. Small businesses are closing, families are losing their homes, yet Canada's billionaires have increased their wealth by over $37 billion. Canada's web giants have profiteered enormously during this crisis, yet they pay the same in taxes as Donald Trump pays in the U.S. We need action. So why is this Prime Minister so weak on having the wealthy pay their fair share? And why isn't this government putting into place immediately an excess profit tax to ensure that those who profit from this pandemic pay their fair share? The Honourable... Madam Speaker. The Honourable Minister. Our government recognizes that for far too long, Canadians have fallen further and further behind, even while those at the top have for gotten further ahead. And over the last four years, we have improved tax fairness by closing loopholes, eliminating measures that disproportionately favor the wealthy, and cracking down on tax evasion so that every Canadian has a real and fair chance at success. Madam Speaker, we have also committed to tax extreme wealth inequality, including by concluding work to limit the stock option deduction for the wealthy. The Honourable Member for Rosemont La Petite Patrie. Madam Speaker, clearly the Liberals don't have the courage to tackle the, the wealthiest Canadians who are benefiting from the situation. Many companies are suffering and people are taking advantage of this as companies such as Netflix and Amazon have seen their profits explode. explode. And we know that these big businesses do not pay taxes in Canada. These, they do not participate in our collective efforts to fund our health care system and our schools. When will the Liberals have the courage, their Honourable Minister? Madame la Présidente. Madam Speaker, our government recognizes that for all too long, middle class Canadians are getting behind, whereas wealthier Canadians are getting richer. So we did improve fair tax. And so once again, my dear Johnny, my dear friend.